I'm Adam Sexton. President Donald Trump set a high bar for New Hampshire political events with his rally last month that drew thousands to downtown Manchester. Local Republicans are newly energized, and not just about the president in 2020, but also for all the down-ballot races. Joining us this morning is someone who is potentially interested in both, Lynn Blankenbecker. Hi, Adam. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me on the show. So you were at the Trump rally. Yes, uh, I was. Give us a sense of what is it that uh, Democrats and non-Trump folks don't get about those events? Well, I, the energy in the room, I, it was a packed room. There wasn't there wasn't a place to stand or sit that was left. And, and, you know, the energy in there was just unbelievable. I think folks are very excited about what's coming in 2020. And they certainly are celebrating all of the great policies that our president has put into effect. So you're serving on as a national advisory board for Women for Trump. Yes. What are some of the issues that you're looking to get out there to help the president in 2020? Well, you know, we're, we're really trying to get the message out and let women know just, you, you know, exactly how uh, impactful this president has been for women's issues in this in this country you know 57 percent of the new jobs that were created under the uh, president's administration have been filled by women that's very exciting for us we have the lowest unemployment rate in 65 years for women in this nation and 660,000 women were lifted out of poverty just in tw you know since President Trump has become our president so those are really exciting things for women in our nation it's a group he struggled with, though. Why do you think that is? Um, well, you know, I mean, there's this myth out there, right, that, that uh, you know, women like me only voted the way our husbands told us mm -hmm. to. And I can tell you that that's not the case, not what I've seen out there. I've been out there talking to women across the nation um, and certainly women in the Granite State. And they're very excited about, um, you know, the improvements that there have been for women in this, in this country. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think that we just need to get our message together. We're a unified front. This advisory board that I'm part of now, one of 36 women across the nation, the only one in New England, so I'm very honored to have that um, that title here. Um, but it's helping us get that message out and helping us unify those women. You know, last week we held an event. We had 20, uh, on the 22nd of August, we had a number of small little gatherings in the state of New Hampshire and, a, and in a handful of states across the nation. And we registered 4,500 new women who are supporting President Trump. So we're getting our message out. They're hearing the good news stories. And it's it's been great. What's the message to women who might be on the fence about President Trump? And they go back to the Access Hollywood tape uh, just before the election. Uh, Senator Kelly Ayotte famously withdrew her support uh, from candidate Trump at that time because she said, I can't be on board with someone who said something like that. So I guess in your position, how did you come to terms with those comments? And then when you encounter women who say, gosh, I, I, I like the president, but I can't get past what he said. So, you know, a lot of that is just outside noise. And we really have to look at the facts. And we need to really look at and pay attention to those, those ways where our president's policies have made life better for women and certainly better for families and better for all you know people in the United States and so you know as those are starting to come to the forefront people are starting to realize more and more um, you know based on facts and not paying attention to the outside noise back to Washington James Comey uh, was just in essentially cleared by this investigation in the Department of Justice but they said that he did violate department policies for the FBI uh, do you think it was a mistake that the Attorney General did not prosecute him for what he did? Well, you know, I put a full faith and confidence in the leadership in this nation that they're going to do the right thing. Um, you know, the President has certainly surrounded himself by professionals who uh, who I think will do the right thing. And so um, I don't really, you know, think that I, I should comment, especially on behalf of the Women's Advisory Board, on such a statement. But, um, yeah, I have confidence that the way the judicial system will work out will work out the way it's supposed to. As a conservative, you're an anti-tax person. Uh, tariffs are taxes, and the President is has been using tariffs to try and, you know, win trade wars, essentially. Do you think it's time for him to make a deal, especially now that we see some indicators that the economy uh, might be ending its sort of uh, jet-powered burst that it's had here? Lately? Well, I would offer, Adam, that our president's been making deals since the minute he came into the White House. And so I just look at the G7 that we just had. Um, our president has brought negotiators to the table uh, repeatedly. That is his pattern and his habit. And so I think he is making deals that are sound for our country and certainly for our economic success in this country. But uh, do you support continued use of, of taxes on trade, essentially? Um, you know, I, I really support what the president's doing and his policies where he is, uh, you know, holding holding the line. You know, he's holding uh, other nations accountable and certainly looking out for the best interests of the, the American people. Let's shift back to 2018. You came in third in that mm -hmm. Republican primary, but it was crowded there at the top. I think the winner had 11,000 votes and then 10,000 and you were at 9,000. Right. So very competitive. What were some of the lessons learned from you, for you, from that campaign? Well, you know, 
know, for us, we, we, I was on active duty till very late into the game. I was number 24, I believe, of 25 candidates running for Congress in the state of New Hampshire on both sides of the ticket at that time. And so, um, you know, I had a little bit of catch up to do. And so I had to build a team, you know, as, as I was sort of launching an, uh, a campaign. I will tell you that I, I had tremendous supporters and I'm very, very grateful for the supporters I had. They did a phenomenal job jumping on board, helping me fundraise um, and helping me try to get my message out. And so that, you know, I think where we fell short was getting our message out. Hmm. What's your outlook for 2020? Are you interested in running again? You know, those that same group of really wonderful supporters have asked me if I would consider running again. And, and you know, I, I, I certainly would, would entertain an idea to do that. Uh, I look at um, all the reasons why I ran for Congress the last time. You know, I was very disappointed in our Congress, and, and I'm still disappointed in our Congress. You know, we have a very radical left group there of socialists, AOC and Omar, and, and as I refer to now, our current representative, Ocasio Custer, who, um, you know, who are leaning too far to the left and certainly uh, moving towards a socialist agenda that just isn't right for America. And so, yes, I would consider that. And so Congresswoman Custer isn't necessarily a part of the squad, but that Saturday Night Live did lump her in there with the raise the roof aspect of it. So there, it's in pop culture in some ways. But you think she's going to pay a price essentially in 2020 for that association? Well, I think she does align herself very closely. I mean, you know, you can't, I you know, can't open the paper or open a, you know, social media that she's not in pictures with them. And she has certainly aligned herself with their values and certainly with them. So getting back to the 2020 potential primary, uh, the nominee from last time, Steve Negron is running again. Uh, he said he would really like to have a clear shot, you know, to try and campaign all the way through uh, against Andy Custer and not deal with a Republican primary. Um, of course, any candidate would not want a primary. But what's the what's your what are your thoughts there that that perhaps that Republicans who have long wanted to defeat Andy Custer could finally do it maybe if they had that quote unquote clear shot. So, well, you know, that's the beauty about uh, New Hampshire politics certainly is that we do have a primary process and that the voters get to decide who they think is the best candidate and who will be able to um, prevail at the general. For me, I'm looking straight to a general. It's important just as you've highlighted that we uh, change that seat and give, uh, you know, give a better opportunity for the people of the state of New Hampshire and certainly for the second congressional district. So uh, I, you know, I think that our primary process is great and I, I certainly don't have any problems with it. There was this kind of dust up, mostly on social media in the last campaign about your campaign slogan, Combat Proven. Uh, there were some who were questioning that. Uh, do you think that was driven by any of the other candidates in that campaign? Well, we know who said it. So, you know, I, I would say, you know, likely, but, you know, I mean, I, I, I know who was quoted, at least by the union leader who was quoted. So I know who said all that. Um, you know, I really don't want to put um, politics above patriotism. I think that's a really dangerous place to go. Um, the fact of the matter is I did care for combat casualties in a combat zone, caring, you know, as a combat nurse and working in a combat hospital. And so my signs that which which was what created all that that buzz um, were completely accurate. And I will tell you this, I took care of a young man over in Afghanistan who did not survive. And five years later, I had the opportunity to meet his family. And I will tell you what the impact of that was. That family called me up when they saw that buzz and said to me, are they suggesting my son didn't die in combat? You were the nurse who was with him when he died. The collateral effects of that, it's very dangerous. Right. Uh, and certainly social media can turn into a bit of a cesspool yes, sometimes. It can. But, um, you're still serving. And, yes. and you said that before that that did kind of get in the way a little bit. If you do run in 2020, do you think we'll see you perhaps uh, retire? Uh, I'm not trying to push you into that, but do you think <laughs> that you would become a more full-time candidate? Um, well, I, you know, um, first of all, I will address that. I, it really didn't hinder me from campaigning. I did have Navy obligations, and, and I did fulfill my Navy obligations and separated those from my campaign obligations, certainly. You know, lots of, of uh, co seated congressmen and senators and uh, have served. Lindsey Graham was in, was an Air Force reservist General Heck was in the Army certainly uh, you know Congressman Murphy he was a Navy reservist Congressman Paul Brown this is not foreign and they serve they have their own uh, boardroom right there within the Congress they discuss issues that come before Congress that are of national interest when it comes to national security so it really is not something foreign and it certainly did not get in the way nor will it get in the way of any future potential election I tend to you know I will, will have uh, Democrats feel like they've got the wind at their back after 2018, obviously. How do you make the case uh, that 
President Trump and Republicans are in good shape uh, moving forward into 2020. Oh, just look at the statistics and look at the facts. I mean, our president has done some really phenomenal things. You know, he's negotiating at the table with foreign leaders. He certainly, I, I've already highlighted for you all the ways that women are certainly benefiting from our president's great policies. Um, you know, our nation is in a better place economically, certainly from an unemployment standpoint. Um, you know, we, we are doing so much better. So I think those facts will rise to the top and we, we have have to you know we have to focus on on those successes and I think we are successful and clearly that arena uh, in downtown Manchester showed there are a lot absolutely. of Trump folks out there absolutely no matter what the polls say yes. all right Lynn Blankenbecker thanks for joining thank us thank you on so much for having me Adam. it's always a pleasure